One of the most defining moments of Anakin's fall to the dark side was when he finally got revenge on Dooku, executing the man in cold blood. This moment was after the Sith Lord had goaded him into using his anger, but found that he was unable to defend against the fury that was unleashed. The coup de grace came with one scissor snip of lightsabers in Anakin's hands. In the moment after he committed the act, Anakin only looked more unsure of himself. However, in the Revenge of the Sith novel, we get an extremely detailed look into Anakin's mind and how this act greatly troubled him. In fact, for the rest of his time on Coruscant, Anakin would be haunted by this singular moment, racked with shame and guilt that no words of justification could ever mask. So why is this? What were Anakin's thoughts as he struggled with his first steps in the dark side and the death of Dooku? Well, join us today as we open a holocron and untangle the complicated mind of Anakin Skywalker. Now, let us begin. At the moment of the kill, to Anakin's perceptions, none of it ever seemed real. The novel tells us that he feels like he was within a dream, one where anything and everything was okay, and he would be justified. Anakin felt correct to take revenge on the man who had taken his arm, the man who had brought a war upon the galaxy which cost the lives of millions. Dooku, a once great Jedi, had become a Sith Lord and a terror for those who fought alongside him. Now Anakin had this man reduced to a handless prisoner. His hesitation was only a product of his Jedi training, but that all came crumbling down with two words of permission given by the Chancellor. Do it. But after the deed was done, and Anakin came back to his senses, he was horrified at what he had done. He actually doubts his humanity for a moment, as he feels extremely far removed from the person that he believed that he was. A Jedi. This is what the novel reads. The murderer blinked again. Who am I? Was he the slave boy on a desert planet? Valued for his astounding gift with machines, was the legendary pod racer the only human to survive that deadly sport? Was he the unruly, high-spirited, trouble-prone student of a great Jedi master? Was he the star pilot, the hero, the lover, the Jedi? Could he be all of these things? Could he be any of them and still have done what he had done here? The dramatic storm of thoughts in Anakin's mind shows how he literally felt himself slipping away. He pulled back and sputtered something about not being able to stop himself. He shouldn't have done that, staring down at the corpse of his own kill. The Jedi and Anakin immediately knew that he had done something wrong. This caused guilt to flush over him like an ocean, one that he was now drowning beneath. The Chancellor began to speak softly to him, telling him revenge was only natural after what Dooku had done. In the book, Palpatine even goes on to say that revenge is the foundation of justice. However, while Anakin feels a little better, the words of justification could only sink so far in his being. We can clearly see that Anakin is genuinely a good person, one that was pushed too far out of himself by the dark side. And now that Anakin has returned, he is appalled at the actions of Darth Vader. This was a choice he now can never unchoose. And in this moment, he remembers the words of Master Windu, there are no second chances. Speaking of Windu, he would be the first Jedi to hear about this once Anakin returned to Coruscant. Obi-Wan had only determined Anakin's victory after waking up upon his back, dangling in an elevator shaft. He hadn't known that the success had been at the cost of Anakin's humanity. Obi-Wan believed that Anakin had done the act as a true Jedi and was praising him to Windu. Windu at first was shocked and joyous. His mind ran through the implications of the news of Dooku's death. Dooku was to the Separatists what Palpatine represented to the Republic. Without him, all of the Separatist factions would shatter and dissolve in a matter of weeks. The war was over, or at least this was close to the end. However, in Windu's own inner celebration, this faded quickly when he saw the look on Anakin's face. He picked up on how unhappy and ashamed Skywalker was, and Windu was now suspicious. But interestingly, the rest of the council did not share in his dubiousness. They were all too excited because they saw this as a sign that Anakin was beginning to fulfill his destiny. One Sith Lord down, one more to go, and Skywalker was going to be the one to do it. Hence the off-the-books mission of Anakin spying upon the Chancellor, trying to get close. Meanwhile, Anakin himself wanted anything else but to be on Coruscant. Here, he was constantly reminded about what he had done, and for the next few weeks, he would be haunted by the death of Dooku, believing that he was becoming a different person, losing who he was. The guilt of it all choked him whenever he was trying to enjoy himself with Padme. Anakin's feelings worsened when he began having the dreams about Padme, which led to him not getting any sleep. 
when the day came that he was elected to be upon the council. At that same moment, he was denied the rank of master. Anakin's fears had come true. The novelization tells us that the moment Anakin spoke out in anger against the council, it wasn't Anakin speaking, but that Dooku's killer had taken control, Darth Vader. And when he came back to his senses, Anakin was embarrassed and ashamed, just as he had when Dooku fell. It's fascinating to watch Anakin struggle with this kind of feeling. He around this time was accustomed to being on the front lines of a war. He had faced down many enemies and even had to deliver swift justice upon them, such as when he stabbed Tal Merrick through the back. But that time, just like the rest, Anakin had reason to use lethal force. Merrick was about to blow up Duchess Satine's ship with all of the senators and ambassadors aboard. Obi-Wan and Satine could do nothing, so Anakin acted, and he was not sorry. There have even been plenty of times Anakin engaged someone in a duel, and he had lethal intent, such as when he faced Dooku on Naboo. But the difference is that Anakin in these situations may have been acting out of anger, but he was still the Jedi hero. It was a righteous fury that drove him in this moment to do whatever was necessary to end the war and ensure the safety of those around him. Anakin was not a killer. Even when he's acted out of darkness, he rarely allows himself to go as far as to end a life. But just as the Tusken Raiders haunted Anakin, now too did Dooku. Anakin reveals in his thoughts that the reason why Dooku's death on the Invisible Hand stuck with him so profoundly was because Anakin had an opportunity to bring Dooku in alive and preserve that life. He was an unarmed prisoner, no longer a threat to anything or anyone, but for an unprompted, unprovoked reason, Anakin beheaded him in a very un-Jedi-like manner. This was the act of Vader the Jedi hero Anakin, imprisoned by his own anger. Anakin's feelings for this moment carry over to the duel in the Chancellor's office between Windu and Palpatine. When Windu realized just how powerful Sidious was, and how much of a hold he had on Anakin, he knew that to bring Sidious to trial would mean nothing. It would be a joke. Palpatine had control of the Senate and the courts, and for all he knew the destruction of the Jedi had already begun, and now the Chosen One was coming to the man's defense. Mace Windu, had to kill Palpatine. Execution may not have been the Jedi way, but this was warranted. But that is not how Anakin saw it. Haunted by the memory of Dooku, he believed this was the same situation. Blinded by Palpatine's manipulation, Dooku was only a small part of Anakin's feelings, as he believed he needed Palpatine to stay alive to save Padme. It's important to remember that Anakin's killing of Dooku was not a byproduct of his turn to the dark side, but far more important, a deliberate stepping stone towards that end. Many things would have changed had Anakin elected mercy. Falling to the dark side is not an affliction, but a series of choices. And for Anakin, that began as far back as the Tusken Raiders, continued on with Dooku, and was fulfilled when he betrayed Mace Windu. However, that's not to say that he immediately turned evil, as right up until the moment that he became Vader, Anakin Skywalker loathed the dark side within himself, and what he had done to cause its rise to power. But anyway, my friends, what are your thoughts on this? Had you considered that Anakin would have felt ashamed of the way that he killed Dooku? Did you know that this stuck with him as heavily as it did, haunted by the ghost of Dooku? As always, my friends, thank you so much for stopping by the archives today. We would love to hear your thoughts on this and how Anakin deeply regretted the way that Dooku was killed. And as always, we hope to see you again in the archives soon.